This week, I'll show you guys how to design a simple poster in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Retail Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to design a simple poster in Photoshop. We're going to work with a few shapes, again a few of my portraits and as well a cool plugin called Red Giant Software from Knoll Light Factory where we're going to apply some really cool flares to get a purple color tint. Yeah, enough of the talking, let's get right away into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, you guys can see here on the right hand side, I've um, layered everything already. So basically this is my final image over here and then also a few different layers. Let's quickly start from the background here and just show you guys the whole process. So what you'll learn today. Background, again also the background design here with some shapes. Then again the portraits on top, some shapes as well. And again the text. And then also lastly a final touch here just with some color effects. Great, I'm also gonna not going to start this straight from the beginning because this will take way longer. I will start working on my existing design and continue with that in order to speed up this whole tutorial, otherwise it's just gonna get too long. Okay, so first step that I wanna do now is go to the new layer icon down here and create a new empty background. So basically just a white layer. So for that, marking tool and just select everything like we do every week right click inside of that selection and I want to fill it up with white foreground color. Okay, and press command D, get out of the selection. So if you're a Windows person, please press control when I say command. Okay, great, so you've got a white background now and we can start working on that. Also, if you don't know how to get even to this place and you are completely new to Photoshop, please go to file, new, and in here you will have to add your dimensions. Don't forget about 300 dpi, so it's nice and high quality. Also, if you're completely new and don't know what's cooking, head over to our YouTube page, and on there we've got a Photoshop 101 playlist for beginners, where you learn how to even get to this point with canvas sizes. Stop, 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 stop. You are still watching the tutorial. Well, thank you for that, but wait no longer. I've got a little secret coupon for you, which only you receive in this little video now. So there's only 25 seats open for my 101 Photoshop design course that holds all my backgrounds, PSDs, shapes, brushes and everything that you need to have to replicate my designs. So yeah, wait no longer, click on this little button over here. It's a $10 reduced entry to my design course for only 25 seats. So yeah, go ahead and click right now. Great, I'm gonna go to view now, say new guide and over here in the vertical 50% Okay, so I'll find my center spot and now just take the move tool and from the rulers drag down another guideline. If you don't have the rulers, please go to view and select rulers over here. I'm actually going to turn off my background layer and show you guys what I mean now. Just take the move tool and on, on the ruler just click and drag and I'm going to drag out another guideline over here. Great, drop that so I've got this image also spaced a bit further from this one. Great, so next step that I will do now is first of all start out just with a new empty layer. I'm gonna rename this to shape and start right away with the pen tool and create some shapes. Now, if you are new to this, the pen tool might be very confusing and difficult to work with. So I would suggest working with the shape library here. Custom shape tool, and if you go here to the application bar, you'll see that you will have a ton of shapes, but these are only my shapes. You will not have them. You'll need to download them. So feel free to go to the description and follow the link to my website to download my free Tronics Design Media Package where I've included all of these shapes for free for you guys. Okay, so simply go to the description and download my shape library. So I'm going to select this hexagon over here and also select again, go back to my image and on the shape layer, I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard so it's equally expanding and now I'm going to make a big selection over here with my shape. As you guys can see, that already created. I'm gonna move that a bit over. And first of all, this is just the stroke. There's nothing filled in it. So I'm gonna go back to the labor, uh, tool over here, the shape tool. Under fill, I'm first of all gonna select the solid one and go to the color picker. And with the color picker, select a dark purple from here because my images all go into a dark and a purple direction. So just check what your images will look like. Also under stroke, I'm gonna set to transparent so we don't have any strokes around here. Then I'm also gonna press Command, Shift and H, so these outlines hide here, these paths. 
Okay. And now I'm going to press Command T to rotate this. Again, Windows PC, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, so Command T, Hold Shift. You don't actually need to hold Shift. You can just wait till this arrow appears and then you can rotate this a little bit. Okay, I will rotate this and I will also do the designs a bit quicker. Please take a bit more time when you do this. I obviously don't want to keep you too long waiting with the tutorial, so I'm doing it a bit quicker. So my first layer here with the shape, I'm actually going to create another new layer was now with the shape tool but the next ones i'm going to create with the pen tool because it's just quicker for me and i can work a bit rougher okay so i'm going to select the pen tool over here from the tool panel and quickly going to replicate just some of these triangles here with some path again remember if you don't know how to work with the pen tool we've got an awesome tutorial on the channel teaching you how to work with the pen tool so if you're completely new to this okay so i'm just making a few paths over here also the bottom, filling this one up, yep, and just moving this and scaling this a bit nicer. I'm also going to create a random one over here. Well, those I needed to actually finish completely. So let's do this again. From here, complete the anchor point. Great. Now I'm going to move that a bit into the perspective. Great. Okay, now I'm going to create another one over here. Just to show you guys, I just randomly created a few ones. Okay, so these are my second shape. I'm going to hit right click, say make a selection out of these paths, please. Okay, and on this new shape layer, I'm just with the marking tool, hit right click inside of the selection and say fill up. So fill this content with the same color as we did our hexagon shape here. So go to color, select the hexagon color. Okay, okay. And you can press command D. Again, Windows people remember control for you so to get out of the selection great so that's my second part that i'll do and then now i will bring in my first picture so basically the portraits over here for that again i've also selected a folder here on my desktop with all my pictures and i'm simply just going to drag this from the folder into photoshop like so just drop and you guys can see it right away there i'm going to first of all accept it from the application bar move this a little bit this layer and also take down the opacity bit, okay? And now what I'm trying to do is just see that this picture fits in with my triangle over here. You can obviously cut out a nice triangle here from the picture and move that onto your design, or like I do, drop the picture, press Command T, take an anchor point and hold Shift on the keyboard, scale this down a little bit, watch out that the areas are all covered, that's why I'm also working with the opacity, hit Enter, and now what I'll do is just with the pen tool once again, select an anchor point of here, here, down here, and at the top. And I'm going to refine this a little bit. Okay, like so. And hit right click, make a selection, zero feathering, hit enter. And on this Alex 2 layer, I'm going to hit command C for copy and command V for paste. So very simple, copy, paste. Delete this layer and layer 15. Just move this up again, and you guys can now see that this is almost in a perfect shape, perfect triangle. Last step that I'll still do, just take the marking tool, the normal rectangular marking tool, make a nice big selection, clip it to the guiding line, and hit delete on the keyboard, command D, get out of the selection, and now you have a nice straight line there. Great, so I'm doing this quite roughly. I'll show you guys another one, and then I'll speed up this whole video so you don't need to sit here and watch me for ages do this process okay dragging in another one just moving that over to the spot hold shift on the keyboard making this a bit smaller accept it take the opacity down this will always be the same process command t shift on the keyboard make it a bit smaller accept it move this a little bit up again p on the keyboard select the pen tool dot over here dot over here bam and complete the path great right click make a selection zero feathering command c and command v copy paste and delete the original layer now again with the move tool left and right i'm gonna make this a little bit over so it bleeds a little bit over my guidelines as you guys can see over here so again take the marking tool make a nice selection clip that to the guideline hit delete again and press command d in order to get out of the selection Okay, so this was super quick. I normally show things a bit slower, but obviously I want to 
rush a little bit through this tutorial so you don't need to sit here for ages. Okay, I'm also going to do the next four pictures and speed up the video now a little bit. Okay, so as you guys can see, again, moving just the last point in here. And as well, we have all of these layers. So again, layer 20, I'm going to hold Shift and layer 15, Command G, put that all together in a group, and that will be my images. Okay, great. The last ones, you can also take your Shape 2 and Shape 1, Command G again as a group, and write again Shape, so everything nice and sorted. Great, so let's also move our actually the final design to the top so we can see again what we're working on. And now for the next step, what we want to do is obviously create the background design with our little shapes here as well. Let's turn everything of this off, just have our white background. And for that, I'm going to create, maybe we don't need a new layer. I'm going to go back to the shape library over here, shape, custom shape, select the hexagon again. And this time I will go with fill to transparent and stroke will be also solid but with the color of this purple okay and only one pixel now i'm going to hold shift on the keyboard in order to make this equally expand again and make these a bit bigger so i'll make this nice and big over here like so maybe rotate this even so it's in a nice shape and hit command shift h hiding the outlines and now what i will do is spend a few more minutes just re replicating a few of these elements in here and try to make them really nicely and not to clutter it. Again, I'm pressing Command J to duplicate these. You guys can also see there are happening a few more in order just to place them somewhere here into my design. I'm also going to press Command J once again. Press Command D, hold Shift, equally uh, degrading here and make this a bit smaller like so. And now I'm going to place them just on very random spots here throughout my design in order to create a really cool uh, electronic type of design, modern thing. Also, you guys can take a bit more time when you do this. I'm doing this quite quickly, so it might look a bit cluttery and not too nice overall. Okay, one over here. Maybe let's create one over here. I'm just again with your cursors, moving them left and right. And again, one over here. Maybe one more, Command J, and one over here. Great, then I'll take all of these layers, press Command G, put it together in a group, and press Command J now on this group, so I can duplicate the whole group. Move that maybe over here, and leave it like so. And this I would continue for quite a while until I'm happy with my very weird design. Great, once I'm happy with that, as you guys can see over here, I've created a few on different spots. I'll take down the opacity from this. So again, this comp group layer 4 and group plus all of these shapes here, we need to create a final group from this. Okay, and I'm just going to write here shapes 3 and take the opacity all the way down to 50%. This is the little trick on this in order so that this doesn't shine through so much and the attention doesn't go so badly onto this. Then I would create a little logo. So firstly, I'll work with just Tronics today. I'll write here Tronics, okay, all of that set to bold, and the font is Helvetica Neue. I'm going to go to the character box, select zero tracking for this, and make this a bit bigger, okay, just like so, and maybe the tracking even down a little bit further, like a minus 80 or something, okay, accept it. Also, the font is called Helvetica Neue, you guys can find that again in the description down below. Also, the same font color here as the purple again. OK. And accept that for the moment. So on my previous design, it looked a bit nicer. That's the original design here. I'm just going to go with Tronics for now. Now I'm going to duplicate this, Command-J. Move this all the way up to the top. And maybe we want to have a little slogan over here. So all of these people are called 
superhuman and just superhuman that should be fine too okay healthy ticket noise still i'm gonna go with regular and make this a bit smaller the font but take the tracking all the way up again so that it stands out a bit okay and move that over here there will be another text another text over here maybe we can even make this again in a big bit thicker medium let's have a look at that that's also fine okay so again as you guys can see a few elements into the background and on top of each other to make things stand out a bit you can also select this font and still make it bold as well so it stands out really nicely okay great so for the last step that i will do now is again create a big selection here and write portrait but i'm first going to write just po make this nice and big with health vertical and bold i'm going to go to tracking to zero and make this nice and big uh, kind of so like let's go with 122 pixel size okay accept that move that a bit over okay like so and now what i will do is write the rest portrait there we go make this a bit smaller okay and the tracking still down a bit more like a minus 80 or so if you guys don't have the tracking box and the character box here please go to window and select the character box i'm gonna accept it move this a little bit over the first step that i will do now is just select all of it again and select a white foreground color for this okay so it's on white accept it and now you can either write it in two times in two different uh, styles the first one just in that color and the first in that color or you can do my technique and you just duplicate this duplicate with command j turn off this layer the first one select this layer again select the font select the right color okay command d then the first one again and i'll take select both layers with command and hit right click now and rasterize this type so it's just a normal layer and what i will do now is take the marking tool rectangular marking tool make a nice big selection until i reach my shape here at the back and hit delete on the purple one so just remember the purple one is on top so hit delete over here and command d get out of the selection and you guys can see right over here the portrait goes from the purple white background purple foreground into a white foreground purple background so it stands out a bit more take both of these layers press command g you can also write here text and double click on it so you get into the layer styles and just put here like a little drop shadow just would like multiply opacity 75 distance one spread zero and size one very basic great so that's already my design i'm going to go to view clear the guides and that's it of the design so again as you guys can see the final looks a bit different obviously i took a bit more time doing the first one so playing a bit around with the design here always helps this is quite quickly now take these two layers also command g text as well you can do as many groups as you like then last step select your last selected visible layer and now i'm going to make a master shortcut so basically command alt shift and e all together and we have one final layer and on top of that layer i'm going to work now with a plugin go to filter red giant software is the company name and canal light factory that's the plugin name i'm going to select this and we'll replicate some awesome flares here as you guys can already see the awesome flare on the left hand side is all the flares on the right hand side some more elements from the specific flare as you guys can see that is a sunset flare with some poly spread and stuff i turned off the poly spread and the disc and just left with the glow ball i also changed the outer and inner color to something purple and then obviously just move this a little bit around here if you guys want to know and learn more about this plugin have a look at this tutorial i'll teach in this tutorial everything you need to know about the plugin great so i'll put it over here in the top i'm gonna hit ok and do the same process again now so three times filter red giant knoll light factory move this maybe over here to bring a bit of a spread in here okay and do that process once more and now i'm going to decide to maybe put one over here but just the brightness a little bit lower be even a bit more so this might be a bit too much or too less that's obviously up to you how much you want to add that again here's my before and after 
before and after. So the be after was actually a bit more colorful. I would actually have to work a little bit more with this. Okay, my friends, as you guys can see, it's easy to create this, but it will take a bit of time until you are done with your flares as well. Also, if you want to know more about this, have a look on the channel. It's a one-on-one Photoshop playlist for beginners if you're completely new to some of these tools. So go over there and check that out. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this content, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Share this with all your buddies who are new in Photoshop and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching guys, I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Yeah, and you are still here, so this means you are still interested in some more tutorials, right? So yeah, just check over here on your right hand side, there are a few more of our popular tutorials and what happened last week on this channel. So yeah, thanks again guys for watching and don't forget, click right now to see some more videos.